Paul, I'm uh, an open source consultant who can talk about uh, 20 years. And uh, most alumni are doing some websites. We yeah, are specialized in e-commerce websites, like online shops or uh, procurement solutions. And I'm also doing a lot of uh, uh, database formats. But I'm, I'm just a programmer and also an administrator. But I have no clue about design and layout and stuff like that, so how the website looks like. And uh, when I get the project started, the customer comes to me if I want to have uh, this project and these features and what, what the users can do with it. And someone has to provide design and layout for it. Um, <coughs> this is often underestimated because it's a big part of the user experience, how the web website looks like, how do you navigate, and how fast you reach uh, the things you want there. So, as I said, the design and layout is important, but usually the, the different parts involved in doing the design and the programming. So I am the programmer, and then my customer, Eva, he has uh, a web traffic guy uh, on his own, or he hires a third party company and they're doing the design, and basically they get, they're giving the design to me, and I have to put in code so um, I can make dynamic websites. So all the changes, like in a shopping cart, uh, you have the different products which go into the, the design, and you have a shopping cart, you have a checkout page, and all that, and this is dynamic, and this uh, HTML is getting static. So that's a step where often mistakes happen because uh, the design don't think it was a dynamic thing. So for example, you have a product with a long name or long description and it doesn't fit anymore on the layout. So you have to test it. And, uh, and next thing is to make um, Making the doing websites easy is uh, to use a template. So you don't write uh, every page on its own, you use a template, even one or two or three for your website, where you fill in the content, <coughs> or you fill in the data. And the traditional way to template is to have some uh, kind of mini programming language inside, and I'll show it to you afterwards. But this is problems, because uh, the designer can't do that on their own, so it gives me the HTML, I have to change it. HTML to support uh, 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 space where the data goes inside. So I do all that, and then I figure out, oh, he did a mistake in this time. So I, so I either try to say, fix the original <coughs> HTML, or I give them back the templates for all the, for the uh, embedding language inside. And this doesn't work as well, really well. So, um, I tried to figure out our way to do this, and then I came up uh, with a uh, model C prime, which was called HMS Zoom, which follows this idea not to have this inside the, uh, inside the template. But uh, it was still too complicated for me. Well, it was not easy to program it as, as was said before, it was not trivial enough. <laughs> um, so I had the insane idea to write a templating system on my own. So why is this uh, idea insane? Uh, first of all, um, we probably have more templating engines before than people in this room. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first reason um, why it's insane. And the second insane idea was that they used some XML inside, which um, which I experienced that uh, probably will <laughs> really don't like XML. <laughs> you do it's called <laughs> XML. XML. XML is the JavaScript of serialization. Is the, the Java of serialization? <laughs> the Java. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I was just used to do that. <laughs> Uh, but I have also solution. But that was the second incentive. And the third incentive was that um, I used to start to use from websites and then 
uh, one of my customer came to me and said, oh, yeah, we need invoices. Uh, and we need uh, shipping labels for this. Which you put on the parcel that's going to the customer. I said, okay. So he said, yeah, but they have to be in PDF. And then come up with another insane idea to use this HTML template and doing PDF with that. Okay. So, yeah. So it's all pretty insane. So, so why I am doing that? So the main thing is the separation of web design programming. Because there is not really an intersection. Um, so the most embedded engines really violate the principle. They have either a mini language, uh, which puts some values to the, uh, uh, the output, or they have uh, inline code. I mean, PHP is an example of inline code, but there are also um, templates in the protocol which do this uh, inline code. And this uh, module I talked about is HTML2, uh, which has a really pure HTML template, if nothing else. Um, it relies on CSS selectors, which is best like the class of something or the ID. But it puts really the CSS selectors in the uh, programming code. So if you change this in the HTML template, you have to change your code. That's not a good idea in my opinion. So what I came up with uh, is that I'm using a static HTML file and thus um, also a specification file which tells us where the, where the data is put in. So very simple template for a shopping cart. It's just a uh, yeah, Products inside the shopping cart with name, one year price, and depending on how many products in front of you have, you have a total. And we have some data for the cart to play books, like maybe program and forbid, <coughs> are inside our cart. And we have output. So we have L supply for the two products, the price, and the total. It does really sum up, but okay. That's not the point. Um, <coughs> it's a bit more complicated if you have the HTML source code. But you can see it. This is the line of the uh, item. And just down here you have the total cost. This is the place where you want to put stuff in. So the traditional way, as you say, is um, like if you're using the template tool kit, uh, kit template system, which is very popular for uh, using these brackets, and say for each the loop, the loop of all items in the card, and this is uh, put in the output as many items you have, and you have below you have to, uh, just the uh, variable the total, yeah, and for the <coughs> item you get the title. And so and with the state uh, price? State. State the price. Because it doesn't define what yeah. they want. They want the cost of the <coughs> Maybe there's default escaping? What if, have, escaping. what if you have strange HTML like things inside the title of the price? HTML, please. Yeah, that's probably yeah. interviewed. Yeah. That's right. I mean, you shouldn't put the HTML in the database. <laughs> That's a different problem. <laughs> it's a real problem. I mean, you have to <laughs> And that really breaks the design. Mm -hmm. Because they have a, this was a bit crazy. They had an ERP system, and they used the ERP system to put in um, the description for the product. And what I did, they had a word document, and cut out of the word document, and put it in the ERP system, which just dumps in the database and you get the whole big uh, HTML which got out of work and of course the design was screwed up. So yeah, that's a real problem. So yeah, 
I was talking about the common policy of the dating is that the mini language uh, it doesn't make this one up. And you have dynamic pages. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you have the border cases where there's a something tracer layout. And then our border case, which is really normal not covered with, with, with the, the tip tape itself, um, if you like filling out forms and you don't do it correctly, you get error messages. And you should really have something like that in the design as well. Usually what, what I do is I'm doing it myself and then it sucks. Okay. So my concept is a good HMA template, a specification file, or plus a specification, and the data you're getting into your template for the output. So what are the basic elements for, for, um, for a template? First of all, you have variables like the day-to-day, or the temperature, or just single things. And then you have conditions. Look like uh, you want to show something to certain users, and to other users not. So you would hide things. And then you have loops, just iterating about something, in cars, or users in the room, or whatever. So, so for the variables, I have some simple HTML, um, an email address, and yes, here the, here the class is So I matched up in the specification. So email is the name of the variable. My specification, this is the class. This is the relationship. So, and somewhere I can create a template fusion object with some, with the template and specification, and then I process the template for the output, and I have the values, which is like the email's binding address here, and this gets inserted. So. And you can also match up So hope you have some kind of info area or error area on your website. There gives the uh, uh, some messages. So it's like it's the template and something should go inside here. But if you don't have something to go inside there, you should just just um, hide it. So I say I have a container, container, and warnings, class warnings, and the container looks into a variable named message. And then I have also the, the specification for the replacement, the same thing. And if I put in my process method message, no coffee available, uh, this, this will show up with this um, content, and if it's empty, the whole diff container will go away. The whole element? The whole element? Yeah. It will simply not appeal, not CSS or something, it will simply not the output to the HTML. Um, well, the system is sized for like a three of the HTML document, and um, uh, if the container isn't a uh, tool, it will just come cut out. So those values have to be unique because in the, in the process, you're not telling you it, it's it, 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 it a warning, it's the specification. You can hear any of this warning, but it only knows it's warning because you're passing in a value that's called message. So in the other one, where you're, you're saying there's an email spec, so the email had a name had, had a name in it, but what's really keyed on is the is the value. <coughs> Um, it or, or, or can you say what the container is separately, or maybe many maybe many containers have a name? How do you specify something which which would have a similar name value, or those all have to be unique? Uh, no, um, you can have uh, many replacements, the same value stuff. 
from the side of the class. Oh, okay, so that's why the flute instance is a flute instance of Warren. Um, I'm not sure if I get the question right. But, um, let's see, okay. I have in this value, and the message is, uh, is this thing. That's one value. But as uh, you can multiple elements with the class warnings, it can appear multiple times in the HTML document, and you do quite a lot of things. Did you ask the question? I'm not sure. I wasn't sure where in the in the flute process that is processing this this list of messages. How it how does it know what container uh, the messages are part of? Like it says, okay, there's this message here, and um, how does it match that up to the specification, knowing knowing that the container is warning? Is that part of the flute instance? That is a flute instance. Is a flute instance on warning? Or it's somewhere else in the process? I got, I'm, I'm, where's the instantiation? Yeah, where's, what's the instantiation of look like so that it knows this part of the processing is on warning? Or is it keyed only on, on the on the word message? Which, uh, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think I have a word message. Okay, let's go on maybe. Okay. It'll be answered later. Okay, so Different colors of the different rows. So the first of rows may be 
in gray background color, and the next row is in white background color. So, uh, the nifty thing is you have uh, having this um, card at the time class, which is key to your specification. Here again. But you have another class which is different. You have the class bot even, and would be like that bot even, and so on. And template food figures it out. And if it comes to the output, the first row will be odd, even, odd, even, and so on. <coughs> so the advantage of template fluid is to have um, this pure HMI template. And basically, it has no, no programming language inside. And all is packaged on with the specification and the data you put there. But um, that makes things a bit more difficult, which is I use <coughs> the transition templating. So I have a couple of things to solve this, which I'll show you in a minute. The first thing is targets, where, the, where you put the thing, expressions for the containers and operators. So traditionally we would say, Oh, I, I want to put a, generate an URL, a link to the site or to the page. So I said it was simply H, H, and there, there I put for my data the login URL. Apparently that doesn't work with, with my system. So you have to say, okay, I have a very named URL which relates to the start here. But I don't want to put the, the link here. Because it doesn't work. So I say, okay, I take the HML attribute HLED and put it there. So how will it work? And for, for some HML text, I do it automatically because I I know the reasonable thing for, for input type of in is to put the things in the value. So I don't have to say, uh, Target equals value because it's done automatically. So these are the techniques to get around limitations of what you just showed of the, the system, which are really easy in template uh, toolkit. That's what I mean. You can't get the best thing. You have always some limitations. The Dwin solution at the end is a nice compliment. So this is a more complicated uh, example, but the real world example where, where I show the wish list stay the same as the card. But I don't want to show it always. First, I want to show it only um, if the user has a wish list with items in it. So I say, I have, and the next thing is, um, this, is uh, this is a container on the right side of the page, which is on any page but not on the uh, particular page that this is shown. So I have a simple um, expression system. Let's say, okay, so the wish list and not even on this page. Of course, these uh, parameters are inserted in from the code. So it's fake if it's, uh, if it's if it's content, and you can also hook. That is solution for the user set. Um, it's the HTML text, so you can have HTML text and hook it inside, so it will be this HTML will pass and put in my tree, and the output, and I have no problems with <coughs> uh, escape. So, 
you also have filters because you have your data and uh, it will might be a display difference here on the web page, like the price. It doesn't show up as a, it doesn't show up as a number, but you have always the currency symbol and in different countries, different languages, you are arranged differently if the comma and the dot. So this is the example for the currency filter. You just say normal change get a name and then you have filter currency. Same works for this. So this uh, figures out what your code local is and then do it that way. You can also configure the local you want. So I have a couple of built-in filters. Then you have custom filter classes and custom filter classes. So this is quite flexible. First thing I have, this is a quite limited list, but I more or started with the model half, one and a half years ago. But it's pretty easy to write new ones, as I will show you in the next slide. So I have a date filter that just takes the date from database and formats nicely. Currency upper just puts uppercase and uh, here is kind of an interesting thing because um, sometimes if you have um, input for text and the user puts something like this address, which has multiple lines. So if you put just inside your uh, HTML page, it would just show up in one line and that's what, that, that is something you want to do because it looks bad. And this EUR thing just adds the ER tags. Uh, so it show up nicely. And this, this filter really messes around with, the, with my tree. So, so the custom filter class is really simple. You just have the filter method, uh, which get the value to filter, and then it will run to the filter value. And if you're not on classes, you can just write a function. Doing the same thing. That's it, that's not the same thing, but it takes one parameter and you can do anything on it. And later on, you can pass it to the constructor and say filters. And the filter link is uh, going to the subroutine filter. You can also have a global filter. Okay, say, filter name ACL, which uh, works on the list, so you only return a subset of the list. Okay, so I always start with internationalization, which are not really hard ones, but uh, the simplest way you can do it, you, have a, you can pull up a translate function, which pulls in your strings, so you get in the original text from the HTML template, and do your translation thing and give text to translate the text. So you create um, I and the not at the end uh, object interpreted and also put this in the constructor. That's about it. And you, you can also use the key for that. So for for longer text, you want to be as a key because if you change a tiny thing, it's better to key on some keyword. Okay. So uh, you can also do separate forms. So this um, example, form specification has a name and set of fields. It's kind of neat because after the template is passed in the specification, you can identify the form field inside the form. And uh, you don't necessarily uh, need to key on the form or on field names. And you have some ways of manipulating it, set action and set method, and fill the form fields from your from your code. Okay, now to make that insanity. 
which I went in the last year. This was because of my client wanting that. And I thought, okay, I can do that, but after what I thought, oh, oh my God. So the idea is, um, for example, an online shop, you go through all the order process, and then you get a web page with your summary of your order. And many times you also get the email with a PDF summary of the order. And I thought, why we are doing double work? It looked like the same. So use the same HTML template for both of them. So I basically came up with the idea of doing PDF conversion. And if you know a little about HTML, CSS, it can get really complicated. And I, I cannot uh, say it's really good or far advanced or whatever. Uh, but for this particular case, it's doing the job. And so you have to add the concept of pages to PDF where there's no, nothing in HTML. Yeah, right. For example, but that was really easy. Maybe you can uh, turn an LJ every HTML page is a PDF page. Oh, that's still a lot of metric, but uh, the difficult thing is figure out um, to calculate all the boxes and flow layout, flow layout, and stuff like that. Yeah. So I came up with a scheme, scheme that, that works pretty good. Uh, first, is to calculate all the things, how much space they take, and where they are located. Um, and then I partition them through the pages. And the last step is to render them. And this is more or less based on the CSS for the HTML so that I can uh, see the sizes of the images. And inside the code, it, it looks really simple. <laughs> but not behind. So, yeah, first uh, do the huge object and do the processing. So that and next step, uh, I give the, I give the, the template object from the root to the template root PDF part and uh, save the output part. So. So how is it, are the images? Those are the template system for barcodes? Um, well, it's, it's a different model I wrote just for this French uh, model. They are, okay. yeah. But they are constructed in the code. So this is, this is in voice. And you can also import stuff. Because I had a shipping method where the, the shipping company gives the PDF as the shipping method. Okay. So you want to write all the good things with the answer? <laughs> but this adds another insanity, right? What? This adds another insanity. Yeah. Okay, that, that was the easy insanity. So the answer is really. I think for our website is just to stand there and um, say I'm, I'm getting get requests with this part and give take hello world and this shows up on the web page. Okay. And you can start a uh, data project really easily. Okay. So and we want to use um, Dance of Tempted Food or our way out. Uh, you can specify 
uh, the template engine and configuration file saying template is template under construction. <coughs> and you can also give uh, parameters to that in the configuration package to the template build engine. So you can process <coughs> the file iterators there, which reads the JSON file and gives the data from the JSON file that can be used in your template. Because you already wrote the dancer template engine. Yeah. Yes. So, of course, there are a lot of things to do. First of all, okay, more documentation and tests. Uh, one thing is missing, which often comes up in, in a project because if you're searching something, you don't have any matches. So, you want the red good way to display empty lists. Um, have some paging and please, and also uh, support more of the CS selectors, which it would like to use. some way to add classes to parts of text to make it work with text. So that uh, because currently the specification binds to the HTML using class names. Well I can do that. I mean I can first produce the HTML and then convert the text. Ah I see. I see. So we still have HTML but in the end we produce text. It's not a text template. No, it's not a text template. Yeah, yeah. Okay, any more questions? Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>